And so that brings me to my last topic, foreign policy. Mm. You talked about Russia, and you know we have this one in Ukraine where the U.S. is investing on ha, has spent fifteen billion. Yeah, one hundred fifteen billion dollars. Uh, what do you think of the war in Ukraine? Do you, if you're elected president next year, will you? How will you resolve it? How will you bring the conflict to an end? Will you talk to Putin directly or? Will you try to oh, I'd be talking to Putin directly and Zelensky directly. Uh, and there are, uh, we do have allies as well that are already trying to uh, negotiate some of that, uh, negotiate peace as well. And I was asked a couple weeks ago if I would be willing to help as part of the mediation process, uh, just from the diplomacy background that I have. But, you know, the bottom line is I want peace immediately there. Um, I think we were sold, like I said, the government has lied to us about many, many things. Ukraine is no exception. That does not mean uh, that I'm for or against Ukraine. It means mm -hmm. I'm against being lied to. Uh, there are things you can do if you know what's actually happening and then you can have the right solution to the problem. The problem is when you bring me a fake problem and I give you a real solution to that fake problem but that's not the real problem, then you're not going to actually solve the real problem. That's the mess we're in today with Russia and Ukraine. If Russia did went to the Mexico and did on their border what we did used Ukraine to do to Russia we would have already absolutely obliterated all of Mexico annihilated it uh, if they remotely did what we used the Ukrainians to do Ukrainians can't st sneeze uh, without us giving them permission. They can't take a sip of water without us saying it's okay. They're not doing anything unless the U.S. So I, told I, them I, to. I guess my question is, are you going to continue to support Ukraine when you're elected president next year? I'm, going, I'm not going to, to keep sending money that until our national debt is paid off, until American citizens are taken care of. Uh, I, am, I am out of the foreign aid era and into the lending era for the United States. Is it better for you as a consumer to borrow money, spend money on your credit card, or if you have so much money, you can give him a $10,000 loan? It's better to be the lender and earn interest than to be the borrower and pay because the borrower is subject to the lender. Well, we're 31.46 and counting trillion beholden to, to, to other, other places, um, including China. Uh, so I do will have China uh, have a $10 trillion rep, uh, reparations for COVID. Uh, we only owe them $1 trillion, but they're going to owe us $9 trillion and net out our one. Um, and Japan being our largest debt holder, uh, <clears throat> that was reparations essentially. Uh, but why the United States doesn't do that to other countries? Every country we've given foreign aid to since 1960 uh, is worse off. Uh, most of them have been African countries. And, and I have the list of what their GDP is now, how much it's down, what it's changed. The lowest is 9% in Uganda, uh, is 9% is worse, poorer today than it was in 1960 when we started giving aid uh, to, uh, to the con or giving aid period, foreign aid. And then 73% uh, uh, is the worst, and that was in the Republic of Congo. So, no, we're going to fix our problems here in America. Uh, I support peace day one. I'm not supporting Russia. I'm not supporting Ukraine in that sense. Uh, we can't just stop what we have done. We have, co we have commitments and we have allies that we've committed some things to. And I, so I don't want to put myself in a situation like Biden did with Afghanistan. And we have a hasty retreat just because I wish we weren't there. Unfortunately, we are there. We need to, and I go back to, and it's the same answer for Taiwan and China. I will protect American interests anywhere in the world, in any country, with whatever force is necessary, at all costs. I will do it. I will so protect, you protect American interests. I yeah. no, that is the difference. I will protect American interests in wherever they may be found on this continent. I will not go to war for on behalf of a nation to protect a segment of our interest in that country. I'm not trying to go to war. I'm not a warmonger. I seek peace, but with wise counsel, I'll make war. And I'll tell you what will separate me as a president from all the presidents of my generation. I won't just respond. If you force my hand to where uh, I have to respond militarily, it's not going to be an equal and opposite reaction. 
it's going to be the wrath of God coming down. Uh, and it will be ten times worse if you force me into that than if you if we have peace. But you're not calling for a medical retreat from the world where, you know, you move to... No, I, I'm not uh, an isolation policy. Uh, we do live in a global world. Now, we are highly connected in travel. We're highly connected technologically. We do uh, rely on, on other countries for different things, and we contribute to other countries. So that's... that's uh, That's how we want to make America creative and innovative and prosperous again.